Hey everybody, how's it going? It's October 22nd, 2022. Touching base with everybody that cares, doesn't care about the Fountain 35 project that uh, I've been working on, not working on for about a year now. Um, I know there's some people out there that have been really positive about it and uh, I've just been, you know, life, whatever you want to call it, haven't updated it in a while. So that's what this is about here today going to do an overview of the progress that I've made since the last videos and stuff that I've talked about and the next steps forward. And um, that's about it, really. So I think the last video I took was of me putting the transom board, setting it in place with epoxy. Um, so I'm going to cut to that video right now. All right, it's dark. I'm running out of energy but it's time to set the transom in place. So I got everything cut just nice and uh, I'm gonna mix some two to one epoxy, spread it all over. I don't know if you can see through the holes in there. Uh, I got the new transom board laying in there flat. I'm gonna spread the epoxy on it, nice thick coat of it all across the board. I'm gonna put the board in place and then uh, I'm gonna turn the headlights on in my truck right here just to get me enough light to come back out here. And I've got screws and bolts and some fasteners and stuff that essentially I'm going to run through all these holes that you see, you know, for the transom assembly or uh, power steering lines. And then way up under there, there's the exhaust ports that have screw holes that are gonna screw into the transom eventually anyways. Um, and some of those areas are cut out areas that I'm gonna screw into. So basically I'm gonna screw from the outside of the transom into the new transom board on the inside to hold it together in place while the epoxy cures for the next day or so, maybe probably day and a half or two at this rate because it's cold up here. It's uh, October or something, I don't even know, October 13th or something. 2022 uh, so i'm running out of time as far as temperature and daylight during the day and winter's coming and i'm busy yada yada so i need to get this done today um hopefully i don't make too much of a mess and then really the only thing that matters is when i come back here in a day or two and i tap on everything that it's solid and it's i got a really good hold in there so uh, first time ever doing this i've already completed the cabin um rebuild in there as far as the fiberglass rot repair there so i've got some experience doing some stuff but this transom's a whole new deal so i'm nervous as hell i'm anxious to get it done and uh god it's a coward right so worst thing that happens is it doesn't cure right it doesn't sit in place right and i gotta rip this 150 dollars worth of marine plywood and all the resin and time and all this stuff out of there and read oh my god i don't even want to think about it, it makes me want to puke just thinking god it would probably be i don't even know another week of work at least five solid days of long days just to grind out that shitty seal in there and then get it prepped again and make another board to put in there and then oh my goodness so with any luck, the next video you're going to see is me standing in the uh, engine bay, facing the transom, going, yeah, it's set in place and life is good. Wish me luck. So, um, obviously, it's been a little while since that video um, as you can see here, the first part of the transom board is in place and uh, had really nice squeeze out. This is a epoxy made specifically for marine use. Um, and I put it on with a really nice 3 8 inch trowel. So it's thick and uh, had good coverage. And then as you can see in random places, here and here and all over where I could. Um, there's one here. I took screws with washers and actually pulled the board, you know, into the 
the outside fiberglass of the hull that I didn't have to cut because obviously that didn't rot. Um, so that really helped bond it, hold it tight while it was bonding. This epoxy takes uh, supposedly about 20 minutes, but it was really cold that night. So it took a while for this to cure. And uh, you can see it's like running out of holes like this. So you have to come back and wipe it up and make sure it's pretty clean. Um, Cause this stuff, that's like the strongest stuff in the boat to my knowledge. So if you had a drip on your hull somewhere you had to get off, it'd be a pain. So that ran re uh, really well. I had some clamps on the inside that held in places where the screws couldn't get to. Um, and I've done a hammer test, you know, knocking on it here and there. and it's solid i'm really happy with how it came out so uh right before i did this transom actually um i had the cabin i worked on the cabin so let's cut to inside the cabin show you what's going on in there all right welcome to my office lately i've just got uh normal tarp with cribbing over this thing and uh, on the cold nights i've been running a heater to try and keep it warm and it's kind of sort of not been working but i'm dealing with it i'm trying to get this done as much as i can before winter so let's walk down in the cabin here and you can see behind me as of right now the cabin's done so before we go down in the cabin i'm going to do a shout out to somebody who's not going to watch this video but uh, phil hess up at upstate power boat in port byron new york um syracuse area if you're familiar He's uh, my age, and he, it's, in my opinion, Upstate Power Boat is one of the best fiberglass boat repair building facilities in the nation, at least if not the world. And uh, he's slowly taking over the boating industry, in my opinion. There's a lot of cool stuff there, but long story short, Phil's a great guy, and he's been helping me out with all the materials, what to buy, where to buy it from, how to do it all that and then i've been watching some uh, boatworks tv i think it is or boatworks today on youtube um he's got a lot of great videos so between that and my father-in-law who's got just he's mr do-it-all he's really knowledgeable uh i've kind of just been hacking this together so i started in the cabin because everything you're about to see is going to get covered with upholstery or carpet um so it's not a structural integrity of the boat type thing. It's kind of just there to hold the floor and some cushions and the fattest person is going to be down there, you know. So it's a good spot to start and trial and error type of deal. And then when I went out here into the uh, engine bay, I kind of, at least I have half a clue what I'm doing. So let me turn the camera around and let's get down in the cabin. All right, here we go. So um, I'm... As you just saw, there's a picture of the before, during, and after. This is completely done, at least now, for fiberglass and, you know, the way I'm building it. So everything else is going to be worked down in here is cushions, cosmetic, carpet, stuff like that to make it look pretty. But structurally, she's done. Um, all of this area down in here, as you saw, was completely rotted. So... Instead of putting back the fire and stuff that goes over here, it's like a countertop sink that nobody uses. And over here is a bathroom that you can't even fit in. Um, I kind of decided to leave it open. So there's normally a step, like a cutty right here. And it makes it really hard to get in and out. And then this is like, obviously would come over and there'd be a wall here kind of. So I left this nice and open. So you can put your feet on the angles kind of step right here and walk down in without hitting your head too bad. And then the thought is, this is gonna be all lounge seating, cushions here with a back right there. Wrap around like normal fountain cushions do in the bow and they stop right here, right? And then this would normally be, you see the outline for the bathroom and the closet. Instead of that there, I'm just gonna put like a little storage area here for who knows what porta potty just to you know have in place which will be used in there um and whatever else for storage right here where this light is i really like the idea of putting in an apartment size fridge freezer all the way up as high as i can go and maybe a microwave um just for usability 
and then these amps and my shore power and all the light switches and the radio head unit instead of sitting right here out in the open i'm gonna tuck back in this spot right there and build a false wall and then you'll never even see it back there which is kind of right behind the gauges in the steering wheel which is where most of wiring stuff is anyways so that'll work out really nice to do that um so i'm pretty excited how this came out you know there's a little bit of uh stuff here and there the professionals the guys that know will know like you can see some air right here in that corner so there's a little bit of touching up i gotta do but other than that it's it's i'm really happy with how this came out down here um in any spot that you know it might have i wouldn't say rotted but was starting to show its age for example here and right here and some other spots in here and right there any spot that felt like it might go soft or you know it, it really needed some attention i just kind of cut it out and either put in a board like right here i put in a brand new board for that or right here i kind of just piecemealed it together puttied it nice and i mean that's stronger than wood so we're good to go there so every tiny little spot where there is air conditioning was screwed down in here any little hole that was in there i filled up so she's gonna be solid and dry for a long time so there's the cabin for you let's head back to the engine bay that's where the work is being done right now nice shanty town here get the light turned around bear with me a second all right so here's the inside of the engine bay you can see transom board number one so if you're not familiar with this this at least how they did it from fountain i'm kind of uh repeating what they did um the transom is two three quarter inch boards together so this is the first of the two and then i'm as you can tell I've got the stringers in place and i'm fiberglassing them in and then once the stringers are fiberglassed in 100 percent i'll put the other transom board on and fiberglass and you know epoxy all that together and that'll kind of essentially have the stringers tied into the transom really nicely so same thing here i'm going to spin you kind of upside down this is the bulkhead and same deal here so i haven't built the bulkhead yet because i wanted the stringers to go down first and lay in their spots and be epoxied and fiberglass in and really strong and then I'm going to put the bulkhead in. It's going to kind of like the board will go slide right on each side of these stringers. Tie it all in really nice. So today what I'm doing, you can see here, this first board just has resin on it. This board here has chop strand fiberglass, one layer of chop strand fiberglass. And this board has chop strand fiberglass and then 1708 fiberglass matting on top of it so it's really cool to see you know nothing one layer kind of two layers um i would call this right here one lay up one complete layup is chop strand and 1708 so i need to do three layups on each stringer board to be done and uh, after talking with Phil and having some warm weather today, I got my fiberglass cut out already here. So I have my pieces pre-cut out. I'm going to lay them in place, make sure we're good with the drain holes. Everything's lined up. And then essentially resin them in place. And uh, it's kind of hard for me to show you with nobody here to record that process. So um, today, before I cut back with the camera again, you're hopefully if everything goes well, I'm going to start with chop strand on this stringer. I'm going to do outside piece first, inside piece, and then I'm going to wrap the top with chop strand. Then I'm going to move to this stringer, and I'm going to lay my 1708 across here. Same deal. I'll start on the far side, then the inside, then the top. Then I'm going to work back over to this one. I'm going to lay some 1708 on this one here over the chop strand I just laid. So kind of working this area, staying off this stringer so I can step on it. And then once these two are done, I'm going to come over to this one 
Get this one done. There's a lot of talking, and uh, I don't really know what I'm doing anyways, so that's why I didn't really make a video for a long time. All right, if you stuck around this long, you're a hero, and I love you. Thanks for the support. Um, some other parts of this project that I haven't mentioned yet, and kind of part of the delays, financially at least, is uh, I got some superchargers for these engines, 3.3 liter Whipples, and I have done about 207 pieces of powder coating. All nuts, bolts, exhausts, intakes, I mean, custom plate for the top of the intake on top of the supercharger, all purple and orange to match the outside paint scheme. The upholstery is done. I got a bimney top to match. So there's a lot of pieces that I really went above and beyond that I wasn't planning on doing originally that, you know, I just fell into it. For example, I got a purple carpet that a cockpit carpet for this boat. Um, it's a hundred bucks. I wasn't planning on doing that, but I couldn't resist it. And it's a nice addition to it. So, uh, I'm taking my time with it now because I'm really focused on, you know, making it perfect. Everything that I want done is going to be done. And I just can trying to keep the end goal in sight. Because there's so much, so moving pieces, so many moving pieces to this project. It's overwhelming. And uh, like I said before, I'm just Joe Schmo. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, but there's really not much information on these boats out there as far as saving them. Most people just strip all the parts off of them and then throw it in the dumpster. You know, let a bulldozer plow it in the ground and they move on. And this haul was to that point. I mean, most people would have probably just parted it out. It's worth more money selling all the individual pieces off it. You know, then if I set this to a shop to try and get this done at Phil's place, and I'm not knocking the price. It's worth every penny. It would have been $20,000 minimum to repair this thing. And, uh, you know, I probably got two, a little over 2000 in, in material costs and a lot of hours and labor. You know, but uh, when I'm done, it's going to be personalized to me. It's going to be better than factory. And uh, I just truly can't wait. So anyways, I'm rambling because it's been a while. Um, I'll try and do some more videos updating as we go. I'm going to get this engine bait done before the weather gets cold. And then tuck this away. Well, it's tucked away. Leave it for the winter. Uh, the engines basically just need to be painted and assembled and then i have to tune them or set them to a dyno or who knows what i'm going to do just to make them run efficiently with their new supercharger setup um all electron fuel electronic fuel ignition setup um and i've got every piece in the basement already and i've already powder coated some of this stuff so um, i'll throw in some random pictures here and there thanks for following and uh good luck to y'all hope you have a great day take it easy